In this video, we're going to try to get an idea of how we might apply our chi-square test procedures to a two-way table. And then we're going to actually perform that test in the follow-up video. In this case, what we're trying to wrap our head around is, you know, how does a two-way table work again? What would we do with it? What kinds of questions might we answer with it? And how do we calculate things like conditional and marginal distributions, which we did way back in Chapter 4, but we haven't done recently. So we're going to start with a simple example of, you know, what is a two-way table? What might it look like? In the last section, you were confronted with a one-way table. The one that we kind of focused on was the idea of saying, let's take a group of M&Ms and split them up into categories by color. So some were orange, some were red, and some were other colors. And we basically just listed how many were each in, in, in each color group and compared that to what we would have expected for a set number of M&Ms based on the color distribution that we have. So what's different here? Well, let's do a simple example first. Let's imagine this case that we want to, we want to look at party, political party interest. So we could, for example, ask a group of people, are you Republican? Are you a Democrat? or neither, so you're in either some other type of affiliation or none at all. Um, we certainly could ask that question and we could end up looking at what we might expect versus what uh, actually occurs in some population. But let's add a new wrinkle. Now let's also ask them, when we ask their party affiliation, let's also make a note of their gender and say, is there some relationship between gender and party affiliation? So let's say we did that for a group of individuals, and the data turned out as follows. There were 24 male Republicans, two male Democrats, and one who said other. And let's say for the females, we got this set of data. Well, if we got that clear data, it would definitely be pretty obvious that if I knew someone's gender, it would tell me something about their likely party affiliation for this particular group, whoever this group of uh, the sample represents. Likewise, if I knew something about their party affiliation, I could make a pretty good guess as to what their gender might be. Now, this isn't, uh, this isn't necessarily realistic data, but it certainly would be a pretty obvious conclusion. Here's another example. St uh, same type of question, Republican, Democrat, or other. And again, let's look at males versus females. This time, let's say that we had something like this for males and something like this for females. In this case, we would definitely say that the variables are not related in any way, shape, or form. If I know someone's gender, um, that doesn't necessarily automatically tell me something about their party affiliation, nor does it work the other way around because the two are so similar. Uh, we could definitely say the variables are not related. Uh, they're independent of each other in that particular case. It doesn't matter what party affiliation I have, it doesn't give me any advantage in knowing somebody's gender or vice versa. All right, of course, neither of those scenarios are very realistic. Let's say that we had something like this, Republicans, Democrats, and others, male, female. This is probably more likely to be what you might get for a typically sized group. And now it's not so obvious just by looking at the data if there is a relationship between party affiliation and gender or if there's not, there might be, there might not be. So we need a better tool to be able to analyze this. What we're going to do is introduce uh, a, an example that we're going to use in our textbook. There's a fair amount of data involved and some of the calculations are fairly complex. So you're definitely going to want to have your book available to you as we discuss this. Specifically, the page number that you want to be looking at is page 850. If you need to stop the video to find that page and find example 14.4, then you can do that now, and we will return to the example momentarily. Okay, assuming that you found the example, let's set up the premise here. Um, you want to know if you're um, going to be selling wine, for example, if playing music in the background influences purchasing. It's a pretty well-known fact among marketers that if you play music in the background, it can influence people's desire to, to either stay in the store, to purchase certain items, to make certain types of decisions, that music affects our behavior. 
So they wanted to find out if playing certain types of music would induce certain types of behavior. Namely, if you played music that was of French origin, which would probably involve accordions, uh, and if you played music with Italian origins that was clearly classical Italian music, would that entice people to buy that kind of wine? So notice there's a two-way table given on page 850, and it indicates uh, the type of wine purchased and the type of music being played in the background. And if you look first of all at the totals uh, in each column, notice that for the music totals, if you look at those first, those would be the column totals at the bottom of the chart. Notice that when you play no music, you have about 84 bottles purchased. If you play the French music, you're looking at 75 bottles purchased. If you play the Italian music, you're looking at about 84 bottles purchased. So it seems to indicate that in that case, that there certainly isn't any difference between playing no music and Italian music. And if you play French music, you have slightly smaller uh, purchasing, but of course we don't know if that just happens to be that particular set of data. We might need a little more numerical relationship to see if it seems to influence people in general. Also notice that if you look at the wine totals, those would be your row totals, there you have that the French wines, we sold 99 bottles of those, the Italian wines, 31 bottles, the other wines, to, I'm sorry, 113 bottles of those were sold. So if that's the case, it looks like most of the wine being sold, the, the majority of wine, uh, is not quite the majority, but almost the majority of wine is really from, from other countries other than the French and Italian. It could be American, could be South American, could be lots of things. Uh, in the next part, which is really interesting, is they take that and turn it into a conditional probability or conditional distribution. And it may not be clear to you how those numbers are coming about. So keep in mind, you might say, you know, where are they getting the 35.7, which represents the French wine with no music in the background? And where they're getting that is they're taking the 30 bottles of French wine that are the top left element in that column, they're dividing by the column total of 84 bottles, and they're getting 0.357. And that's where they're getting that. They're seeing that 35.7% of the wines sold with no music playing are French. 13% are Italian. 51% are other. So that's kind of how you're going to read that and how you would generate those numbers. Okay? The same thing would be true for each column as you move across. Look at the next column and compare it, and you'll notice that when you play French music, there seems to be a difference because when there's no music, there was only 35.7% of the bottles sold were French. That increases to 52% of bottles sold are French when French music is playing. Uh, and you'll notice the Italian wines drop from 13% down to almost nothing, down to 1.3%. So what does that tell us? It seems that when we play French music, that seems to be causing people to buy French wine at a higher rate than they might otherwise do with no music. If we compare it to when Italian music is being played, notice that the Italian music seems to have no effect because it seems to be the same percent uh, of, of bottles of French wine as when the, there was no music being played. So in that case, we might still think, gee, there's some effect of playing French music. You know, is the Italian music just a wash? I mean, it did seem to increase the Italian sales a little bit. And you might wonder, well, do I have to run a bunch of different tests on this? Like, do I have to run some sort of a test looking at the French music? Do I have to run some sort of test looking at Italian music? How many tests do I have to run here, and how the heck will I do that? Well, to help you process that, what I'd like you to do uh, and you're going to stop, I'll stop the video uh, for this, this will be the end. But I want you to go to page 851 and read a short section which talks about the problem of multiple comparisons. This section is meant to help you sort of see why we need a new type of test to run this because we actually could use the chi-square test we already know, but this is going to argue why we should not do that and why that would be too complicated. 
Once you've finished reading that, start the next video in the sequence to learn the process that you're going to be using.